You don't finish one war and another starts. Somehow, some way, there's always gonna be a war somewhere. But what's interesting about this current predicament is that well, it, was a, it was a powder keg. The whole zone is a powder keg. It was bound to happen at some point. And the fact that it happened now, and not earlier, is pretty much a miracle, we can say. Now, I know the title might sound funny, and that's because it kinda is a little bit funny. Hamas attacks Israel, Americans most affected, and that technically comes because we all know America's gonna need to send money to Israel to support their greatest ally. And of course, that money, that's never the politicians' money. It's never the politicians' money. It's the taxpayers' money. Money that should be, you know, spent on those roads that everybody likes to talk about when we bring up how taxation is theft. To get an interesting perspective, rockets always came from Palestine towards Israel. But I don't think it happened ever for the Iron Dome to fall. Now, for those of you that don't really know, the Iron Dome isn't really a physical thing. It's pretty much like NATO's or NATO's defense systems in Eastern Europe. It's called a dome, but it's technically rocket launchers that are made to intercept incoming uh, rockets, I guess. And because of that, it wears the name, the name of a dome, but that didn't make much sense to me either when I learned about this, but whatever. The Iron Dome is probably, or in this case was, probably the best method of defense against incoming attacks, and yet, somehow, some way, the Iron Dome fell, and the ro rockets managed to hit the residential areas in uh, Akenshaw, whatever the name is, I, I'm not good with my Yiddish. And that's quite surprising, and it's really surprising, and it really makes you think. It's the same, technically, the same system we have in Eastern Europe, and now, there might be reasons to be scared that our defenses might not survive an attack at some point, but nevertheless, I'm getting ahead of myself. Never has this happened, and this only shows us that we truly are living in the worst of realities. Worst one out there, it's no doubt about it. Especially with this happening. Oh boy. Now Mario Nawafal, uh, he's a correspondent that talked... Well, I guess he grew into prominence thanks to the whole Prigozhin thing in uh, Russia. When the Wagner group decided to do a little coup. Because... It's funny. <laughs> they're they're fun, la fun lads like that. Silly little fuzz. Now, Mario Nafal says that there might be links to Iran. So Iran might have helped uh, Hamas, after all. And that's technically not confirmed. There's no confirmation specifically about that. But what's interesting is what the Iranian government, or the official Iranian news, said and their statement. Here's the statement. I like saying statement. It's my new favorite word of the day. Word of the day. We congratulate the Palestinian fighters, the advisor and senior aide for armed forces affairs to Iran's supreme leader Yahya Rahim Savavi said, We will stand by the Palestinian fighters until the liberation of Palestine and Jerusalem. Now, this doesn't confirm anything. This only confirms that... They're happy for it, but it doesn't confirm that Iran is somehow guilty of anything. Now, if something happens and Iran is apparently supporting Hamas, that kind of escalates the conflict. I'm not sure we'll get another seven-day war on our hands, especially not with this one. Especially not with this one. Oh, damn. Now, Mario also says that the long-standing relations between Hamas and Lebanon's Hezbollah are well known. But analysts say the possibility of an indirect link to Israel, to the Israel-Palestinian conflict, will be very real if Hezbollah joins the fighting. 
Now, of course, that's also an interesting perspective. You know, that's one thing I didn't think about, about Hezbollah's role into all of this. You see, that's why you follow people that know a few more things than you. You always come up with interesting perspectives and ideas. Now, overall, my opinion on this is that uh, we don't really live in the worst of times. There are two major wars, you can call them. One of them surely is, and one of them might as well be a war. Happening in a part of the world that everybody cares about because more wars are happening in the world that nobody decries or cares about. And America's hegemonial power, you know, the world police that was enough of a threat to kind of stop this, especially after the whole deal that they did with Serbia and uh, Yugoslavia back in the day because they didn't really get authorization from... uh, the UN or NATO to do those bombings, did they? Anyway, different problem. America that acted as the world police is kind of losing its grasp on its control over the world. Now, of course, this can stem from multiple things. It might be because half of the Americans out there decide that it's a better idea to be more isolationist and care about our own problems, which indeed is a good good perspective. But the other half is... Ruled by Joe Biden. And the less about Joe Biden, the better, because I still want to have a channel tomorrow morning. This conflicting nature in America isn't really helping. Now, of course, you can also blame this on the stupid idea of the two-state solution. Because we didn't learn from history enough to see all the conflicts that appear when you put a certain ethnicity with another certain... uh, ethnicity and the results are always wars it doesn't really matter if it uh, lasts just for six days or a few months the results aren't good and a peaceful solution is not one you can hope to attain understand this there are better chances of ukraine and russia coming to a peaceful resolution and read this peaceful in the sense that they stop fighting and they just go their ways it's a, there's a bigger chance that will happen than there being a peaceful resolution to the Palestine and Israel conflict. Because both sides want to win. And both sides have, as we've seen through history, we've seen through multiple acts that happen in a certain part of that region, that they are willing to go the extra mile just to make sure they maintain control or they win it. This, don't understand it as anything else but a total war. The winner will be decided by who has the strongest friends at that moment and who can afford the most. Right now, Hamas is currently leading in its assault, but Israel won't just take it lying down. So things are bound to change.